Good morning. You might hear our air purifier going in the background. Okay, we hear that noise going. That's yeah, it's our air purifier. Before I jump into the article, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4. Who comforteth us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Our Heavenly Father is always there with us. The Holy Spirit's always there with us. A lot of Christians are going through tribulation right now. Troubles. We're, we're not in the tribulation. We're not in the tribulation. We won't be going through the tribulation. But troubles. We are going through troubles. Seems like one after another after another, doesn't it? That's because Satan knows his time is just about up. He's trying everything he can to keep us here. To keep us from going to heaven and to get us in hell. Well, Satan was defeated at the cross. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean. Past, present, and future. Now, that doesn't mean that we go out and do whatever we want. We have repented. We live for Christ. We do not put our faith and trust in anyone or anything in this world. We put our faith and trust in Jesus. There is no world leader that's going to fix this problem. Now, I've said before, and I could be wrong, but I think I could be 100% wrong. First of all, I hope, we're, I hope we're raptured before the elections. I mean, we could be. We don't know the day or the hour. We know we're in the season. There's a... Videos going out that I've seen. Saying the uh, rapture's gonna happen in October. The rapture's gonna happen in November. That's, it's very dangerous to say that. Now, is that given a particular day or now or no? But we still, we can't say that because we don't know, but it is soon. But um, I've always said, I don't think Trump's gonna get back in. I mean, I could be wrong. But if she gets in, oh, you think times are tough now? Ooh. We're getting a glimpse of what the tribulation's going to be like. If she gets back in, I mean, if she gets in, you know, she's already on this platform saying um, she's going to stop the price gouging at grocery stores and, you know, and, and uh, this and that and everything. It's like, you're in office down. Do it now. But there's clues and blind out there that will go, oh, okay, okay. I'm voting for her. Can't she do it now, McFly? You know. Wherever you're listening in the world, don't don't put your faith and trust in those politicians. Because you know what? When the bombs drop and a day's coming where they will, they're going to save themselves. And they cause all these problems and then they save themselves. But... They can't hide from God. God is... With all of the... God's in control. This is all... God's in control. And He is getting rid of evil. God has a plan. And it's at the point where the church has to be removed. Hey, um, I just went to pause the video, and I don't know if my phone just delayed, um, because my phone's been freezing a lot. Um, I don't know if it was already paused, and then started up again, so if it did that, I'm sorry. So, um, I don't know, this, this phone's been freezing a lot, so. Keep your focus on Jesus. Because we're going to be hearing that trumpet soon. You know, some have been are saying, "Well, it's too late. It's too late to uh, for anybody to uh, 
get on that boat. I've, I've actually heard that. It's too, it's too late for anybody to be saved. It's never, it's, it's, it's never, too, it's not too late. It's never, it's never too late. But once the rapture happens, it will be too late for them to be raptured if they're left behind. They can, they can uh, give their life to Christ during the tribulation, but it's going to be hell on earth. But until we hear that trumpet, it's not too late. We got to keep planting seeds. God has a big neon sign in the sky and nobody's pay, nobody's paying nobody's paying attention. It's, they look at us like we're crazy. Uh, she's been saying the rapture's gonna happen for years. She's nuts. They said the same thing with Noah, you know. Can you imagine what Noah went through? It never rained in that area. And he's telling everybody there's gonna be a big flood. That's like um Telling people we're we're going to have uh, heavy rains in August here in Bedford, Texas. We need rain. It's like been a hundred and over one hundred and five, one hundred and six all week. There was a meme that says a uh, funny meme that says, um, "I'm going to Texas in August. Is it hot? Well, have you ever been cremated? Yeah, it's hot down here. Really hot." Keep your focus on Christ and put on that full armor of God because Satan's out there. He knows where to attack each person. Some it's that all of the above button. Because our time is short. This, and I will no longer be, as I mentioned, um, I will no longer be supporting Hal Turner in any way, shape, or form. I do not like his stand on Israel. And I, I don't care what reports he has. I don't care how good they are. I am not reporting anything from his channel. So. <clears throat> this is from Prophecy News Watch. As we know, the Democratic, Democrat, Democratic National Convention is going on. Did they die the Chicago River's Red? I've seen several of articles, even on X. But I haven't seen anything saying that it's not true. Um, but... I, I just, I removed it because, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I was sure, but then once I posted it, I was not sure, so I removed it. I wouldn't doubt it, but I do know Plan P is out there. Wow. Yeah, so, you support, you support them, you support, you support what Plan P does. So, this is, um, it's titled, Evangelicals for Harris. What you need to know. A newly minted political group hosted a recent Zoom-style rally, as MSNBC put it, touting evangelical support for Harris. Evangelicals for Harris has sought to offer a counter-narrative for evangelicals. Overwhelming support for Trump proclaimed the Tennessean a progressive paper in Nashville. The narrative, as it uncritically repeated, repeated it, is that Harris' campaign has drawn out more direct support <clears throat> for those who may have sympathized with Democratic ideals, but might not have gone out of their way to endorse Biden's former candidacy. Is this true? Well, here are a few facts to know about Evangelicals for Harris. The Evangelicals for Harris call attracted modest participation, but scant evidence of a growing movement. A pledge on the Evangelicals for Harris website to support the Harris Waltz ticket in 2024 has already received over 200,000 signatures. Are people this blind? She's worse than Biden. And then these same people, and I pray we're not here, if we are, and I pray we're not, are going to be moaning and complaining about how worse things are. I mean, anybody that votes for this party, let me just say, she's standing on a platform saying that she is going to do something to pri do something about the food prices and, and price gouging. 
Do I even need to finish the sentence? She's in there now. Do something now. Wow. Not to mention they put a wall around where they are right now. But they will not allow that same wall to be put in the borders of uh, Mexico. Remember the, the, what happened with my, my state, Texas? Saying to take it down. You got to take it down. But theirs can be up. It's so crystal clear. It's mind boggling that some don't see it. I don't know. Anyway. In Vigilicals for Biden in 2020. And that same group is growing. And it's throwing its support behind her. Kamala. However, this evidence does not show that a growing number of evangelicals are throwing their support behind Kamala. So far, the evidence shows that a group of approximately 200,000 evangelicals support Democratic nominees for president, whether Joe Biden in 2020 or Harris in 2024. And I'm sorry, but these people are clueless. I don't support either party. I don't support any of them. Remember... The great or you'll own nothing and love it. Did that just, did they just forget about that? Everything that is happening is a part of that 2030 thing. So you're saying that the Democrats want it, not the Republicans, or the Republicans want it, not the Democrats. They both want it. Don't put your trust, faith, and trust in And wherever you're listening to the world, don't put, not that you are, don't put your faith and trust in any of those world leaders. Because they all have an agenda. 2030. Okay, where did I leave off now? Well, this number may sound large. Um, wait, let me start over again. I don't know where I left off. The evangelical, evangelicals for Harris Zoom rally reached 40,000 listeners, according to MSNBC. This total is about 20% of those who already signed the pledge to vote for them. Ugh. While this number may sound large in isolation, it does not necessarily show that the evangelicals virus is reaching large numbers of new hearers. A 2020 Gallup poll... I'm sorry, one second. You might hear my mother, she just came in. A 2020 Gallup poll found that 32% of American adults self-identify as born again or evangelical. A little more than 80 million people. Numbers vary widely between polling outfits. Because people define evangelical in different ways, but a broad definition seems most appropriate here for an apple-to-apples comparison. Various exit polls conducted in 2020 showed that 76% to 81% of white evangelicals, skin color shouldn't matter, but that's how pollsters classified people, unfortunately, um, voted for Trump over Joe Biden. It's theoretically possible that some evangelical votes have changed their politics in the past four years. How? With everything that's gone on? Ugh. But if Evangelicals for Harris wants to demonstrate that such a change has occurred broadly, they'll have to expand their reach by orders of magnitude. Their website currently boasts that one quarter of 1% of self-identified Evangelicals have pledged to vote for Harris Waltz. People, this, it, this, is, this is prophecy, guys. 100%. This country will fall, is going to fall, and is in the process of falling. And if she, I hate to say it, wins. And I think if she does, it's going to be the same way as what happened four years ago. This country's toast, man. It's, it's gone. So back up the narrative that evangelicals have broadly deserted Trump. Evangelicals for Harris needs to gain millions, even tens of millions, more adherents. The Evangelicals for Harris rally continued a trend of pro-Harris Zoom meetings segregated by identity groups. 
pro-Harris activists <clears throat> excuse me, have organized a series of identity-based Zoom calls featuring I'm not going to put I'm not going to say all this. It's it's very the words they're using are pretty explicit. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. These calls are part of an effort to boast Harris candidacy for online audiences by leading into the theories of identity politics. Looking at all her different groups of people who support her. How can anybody support her? I mean, it's crystal clear. It is so crystal clear. Right now, God has either blessed you with discernment or has your eyes closed. So, Harris, you claim to want to do something about the price gouging with food. Do it now. Hello? Do it now. But people just, woo, woo, woo. They're blind. God's blinded them. No. Clearly. Clearly. It's like looking at a door and saying there's no door there. It's that clear. It's, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. It, it can be frustrating. We got to stay focused on Jesus. Remember, this is all Bible prophecy. They want to bring down this country, and they're doing it. And anybody that votes for her and voted for him a couple of years ago, you're, I'm sorry, but you're partially to blame. If you're that blind, if your hate for one person blinds you that much, now me, I don't trust any of them. I'm a woman, and I'm not voting for her. And I don't trust any of them. Where did I leave off? I always do this here. Ironically, the sheer number of identity groups rallies for Harris while the nation remains split. Roughly 50-50, or perhaps 45-45, between her and Trump. Well, accidentally demonstrates that no identity group is monolithic. No one must vote a certain way simply because they belong to a certain group. Didn't I just say that? I literally just said that. There's people out there that are voting Republican just because they're Republican. There's people out there that are voting Democrat simply because they're Democrat. My niece is Democrat. She didn't vote for Biden and she ain't voting for this lady. You know? Because she got eyes to see. She's got common sense. Even evangelicals have some political diversity. Not everyone who repents and believes in Jesus Christ makes the same Logical connections between scripture and politics. Exactly. The Evangelicals for Harris event. I'm trying to read as much as I can, but my breathing's getting bad. The Evangelicals for Harris event featured 18 speakers, plus a moderator with significant diversity among the participants. Moderator. <clears throat> I'm sorry, just one second. Moderator Ikamini Yuan, and I probably said that name wrong, set the overall tone at a Christian conference in 2019. Yuan declared, okay, for, I'm not, I can't read this. Um, just comments she made about Caucasian people, saying they're wicked. Wicked, it, it rooted in violence, um, theft. It, it, you know, I'm not going to read all that. So, that, yeah, she was... He, she, I don't know, was saying that. Back in 2019. Um, at a Christian conference. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, I don't know about that being a Christian conference. but See, I'm not going to read everything she said because it's pretty she wanted to uh, yeah for censorship reasons I'm not going to read this but something about the, the police and D-E-F-U-N you know um, when asked about these past comments Yuan responded that she told the truth wow okay other speakers are known for previous 
progressive activism within evangelical churches. Among many, Burke highlights Bishop Claude Alexander, chairman of the board of directors at Christianity Today, Reverend Dwight uh, McKissick, a well-known activist for women pastors within the Southern Baptist Convention, and Jamar Tisby, an anti-racist author and former assistant director at Abraham X. Kennedy Center for Anarchist Research. Anti-racist research. I'm sorry. I haven't had my coffee yet. Let's see. Um, it's talking about a lot of, um, like Billy Graham's granddaughter, and I'm not going to read all this because it's, it's yeah, I, I, I can't read that. It's, um, yeah, they may strike me for it. One item stands out from the list of Harris's pro-family policy positions. The first item on the list claims, claims, claims that Harris will continue to work hard. <laughs> I don't know if they can lie to this, but work hard, continue. What has she done to keep the state of these private family matters? Following four paragraphs about supposed threats to IVF, apart from one oblique reference to threats to IVF rising since the overturning of Roe versus Wade, Evangelical Ferris makes no mention. <clears throat> excuse me, of the Harris support for taxpayer-funded ABOR. Until, wow, until B-I-R-T. Wow, does she support that? Dang, until B-I-R-T. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, those poor babies. She's, um, I'm going to leave all this for you guys to read, um, because it's pretty explicit. One second here. Um, let's see. I'm <clears throat> seeing what I can read and what I can't, um. Also, notably absent from the list of Harris's pro-family policy positions is a concern for parental rights and education or health care, protection for minors from gender, T-R-A, and procedures or indoctrination, protections for women's private spaces and sports, age verification laws for P-O-R, you'll have to read the rest, um, sites, or opposition to drug, L-A-G-A-L. Wow. The reason these items are absent from the list is because none of these are positions that she, that Harris espouses. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description box. There's, and remember, Redeemed 51. I'm sorry, one second. Redeemed 51 is my backup channel. Last time I got a strike, I had a hard time getting a message through to you guys. Um... Keep looking up. Sadly, and I've been saying this for years, I could be wrong. I hope I am, but I think she's going to get in, guys. I do. I think they're going to do the same thing that they did four years ago. But anybody that supports this, woe is you. I mean, I, I pray for you, man. For real. I pray for you. Wow. Wow. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Get your left behind letters together. Chris, you think Biden was bad? She's a million times worse. God has either blessed you with your eyes open or he has your eyes closed. It's amazing. And there are so many people. So... It's amazing how there are so many Christians who support a party that supports this.
I'm going to say, um, you know, when women give birth, the platform that she supports is up until that moment. I'm like, I, I, I hope that's wrong. I hope that's wrong. How can any, how can anybody support that? How can anybody stand on a platform and say, I hope that's wrong. I'm, I'm going to look into that to see if that's what she supports. Wow. Poor babies. And we know right now, planned, you know who? They got a mobile truck right outside of the DNC. Ugh. Wow. This country's gone. This country is Sodom and Gomorrah. I think this country may be worse. But we're going home soon. I'm, I'm so ready to get out. This world makes me sick. This article made me nauseous. This world makes me sick. I'm so ready to go home. But each day that we're here, we got to keep planting seeds. Because we know the tribulation is going to be unlike anything we could even imagine. We want as many people with us as possible. We want as many brothers and sisters with us as possible. We want to keep planting those seeds. So keep looking up family and listen. Because we're going to hear that trumpet very soon. I'm sorry the video was so long. God bless you.